story twelve of christmas stories from french and spanish writers by antoinette ogden this librivox recording is in the public domain story twelve solange the wolf girl from the french of marcel prevost all that afternoon we had walked through the forest stick in hand our bags slung over our shoulders through that magnificent forest of Troncay, which covers one half of the saint armand country and one half of nevers the little village of Ossay, squatting on the bank of the cher in the rent of the valley which cuts through the centre of the forest was our last halting-place for the day we dined with an old friend the modest doctor of five or six neighbouring communes and after dinner we sat musing on the stoop with our cherry pipes between our lips the shadows fell around us over the dense blue mass of forest that encircled the horizon with all the solemn slowness of night in june the sky was streaked with flights of swallows the nine o'clock angelus scattered its notes with intervals of silence from the height of a snuffer-like steeple which emerged from among the roofs from distant farms came the barking of dogs calling and answering one another a woman still young in a red woollen skirt and a white linen shirt came out of a house near by and walked down toward the river with her left arm she pressed a baby against her bosom a little boy held her other hand and gave his in turn to a still smaller brother when they reached the bank of the cher the young woman sat upon a great stone and while the two boys hastily undressed were paddling and splashing about like ducks in the stream she nursed her last born one of our party who was a painter said there is a picture that would be popular at the salon how splendidly built and well lighted that woman is and what a pretty bright spot that red skirt forms in the blue landscape a voice behind us called out the girl you see there young men is solange the wolf girl and our host who had been detained by a consultation came out to join us as we asked him who was this wolf girl and how she had come by so strange a nickname he told us this story this solange the wolf girl whose real name is solange tournier wife of grier was the prettiest girl in the whole trances country about ten years ago now of course working in the fields as she does and having had five children she looks hardened and worn still considering her thirty years she is handsome enough as you see at the time of the adventure whence she derived her strange nickname she was living with her parents who were farmers of the rhin du bois some fifteen kilometres from here although very poor she was much sought by all the boys even by the well-to-do but she accepted the addresses of only one a certain laurent grier on whom she had set her heart when she was a wee bit of a girl when the two kept the sheep together in the neighbourhood of rhin du bois laurent grier was a foundling who had nothing in the world but his two arms for a fortune solange's parents felt no inclination to add poverty to poverty especially as the girl had so many wealthy suitors so solange was forbidden to see her friend naturally the girl never failed at a tryst living in the same commune with the forest at hand they never lost an opportunity of meeting there when the father and mother tournier realized that scoldings and blows were of no avail they determined upon a radical step solange was accordingly sent out to work at ursay on the model farm of m roger duflo our deputy perhaps you think our two lovers ceased to see each other not in the least they now met at night they slept no more after nightfall they both left the farms where they were employed and started toward each other and then they remained together until nearly dawn in the maternal forest the accomplice of their young love this was in eighteen seventy nine in this manner the summer and autumn went by then came the winter and a fierce winter it was the cher carried ice drifts and finally froze from bank to bank the trances forests covered with snow were bent like weak supports of an overladen roof the roads were almost impassable the forest deserted by man was gradually being reconquered by beasts it was soon invaded by wolves which had neither been seen nor heard of since the terrible year 
yes sir wolves they haunted the isolated farms around lurcy levy and ursay they even ventured into the streets of saint bonnet le désert a little village in the heart of the forest on the banks of a pond it reached such a point that men were organized into bands to beat the woods a reward of fifty francs was offered for the head of a wolf neither winter nor wolves however daunted solange and laurent or interfered with their nocturnal meetings they continued their expeditions in the face of a thousand dangers this was the dead season in the fields the time when the land lies fallow every night laurent left lucy levy a gun over his shoulder and penetrated with a lively step into the black and white forest solange on the other hand started from ursay at about nine o'clock and they met near a glade some three kilometres from here traversed by a road and known as the Découverte. it so happened that one night which by the way was christmas eve laurent grillet as he reached the rendezvous slipped on the hardened snow and fell breaking his right leg and spraining his right wrist solange tried to raise him but could only drag him to a great elm against which she propped him after wrapping him in her own cloak wait for me here my poor laurent said she i will run to ursay for the doctor and get him to come for you in his carryall she started off but had not reached the first turn in the road when she heard a report and the cry help she ran back and found her friend in an agony of pain and fear his trembling hand on the gun which lay beside him she said what is it laurent was it you who fired he answered it was i saw a beast about the size of a large dog and with great red eyes i believe on my word it was a wolf was it at him you fired no i cannot lift my gun on account of my arm i fired on the ground to scare him he is gone now solange reflected for a moment will he come back i am afraid he will answered the lad solange you will have to stay or that beast will eat me well she said i will stay let me have the gun she took it put in a fresh cartridge and they both waited an hour passed the moon as yet invisible had risen however above the horizon for the zenith reflected a confused light which was gradually growing more intense laurent felt the fever coming upon him he shivered and moaned solange half frozen as she stood leaning against the tree was beginning to feel drowsy suddenly a bark a sort of howl like that of a dog at night when it is tied made her start in the faint light she saw two red eyes fixed upon her it was the wolf laurent tried to rise and take his gun but the pain flung him back with a cry load solange said he do not fire too soon and aim between the eyes she shouldered aimed and fired but the gun recoiled and missed aim the beast was untouched it ran off a short way down the road then it was heard howling at a distance and other howls came in answer the moon was climbing the sky it suddenly passed the dark mass of the thickets and flooded the entire forest as the footlights illumined the scenery on the stage then solange and laurent saw this horrible sight at a few feet from them five wolves were seated on their haunches drawn in line across the road while another bolder than the rest was walking slowly toward them listen said laurent aim at that one that is coming if you bring him down the others will eat him and they will leave us in peace in the meantime the wolf continued to advance with short cautious steps they could now see his bloodshot eyeballs distinctly the protruding rings of his spine the sharp bones of his carcass his dull hair and his open jaw with the long tongue hanging out hold the butt end well in the hollow of your shoulder now fire there was a report the beast leaped to one side and fell dead without a groan the whole band galloped off and disappeared in the copse run solange cried laurent drag him as far as you can along the road there is no danger the others will not come back for a while yet she had started when he called her back it might be just as well to cut off that beast's head on account of the reward have you a knife asked solange 
yes in my belt it was a short-handled broad-bladed hunter's knife she took it and ran to the dead wolf she made a great effort and drove it in his throat the warm blood trickling down her hands and along her skirt she turned her knife round cut deep then hacked and finally severed the head from the trunk which she dragged by one leg over the slippery snow as far as she could then she returned to her lover with the bloody bristly head of the beast in her hand what laurent had foreseen occurred the wolves at first frightened by the death of their leader were soon brought back by the smell of the blood in the white light of the moon reflected by the snow like the fantastic light of a fairy scene the two young people saw the group of lean ravenous beasts rubbing their backs against one another crowding around the fresh prey tearing it limb from limb growling and snarling over it wrenching off the flesh until nothing was left of it not even a tuft of hair meanwhile the boy was suffering greatly from his injuries solange whose nerves were beginning to relax struggled vainly against exhaustion and sleep twice her gun fell from her hands the wolves having finished their meal began to draw nearer the girl fired twice in the lot but her benumbed fingers trembled and she missed her aim at each report the band turned tail trotted about a hundred metres down the road waited a moment and came back then the two poor children were convinced that it was all over with them and that they must die solange dropped her gun it never occurred to her that she might save herself she threw herself down beside her lover clasped her arms around him laid her cheek against his and there under the same cloak they awaited death half frozen with the cold half burning with fever their confused brains conjured strange visions now they thought they had gone back to the balmy nights of june when the forest clad in deep green sheltered their peaceful meetings then suddenly the wood was bare lighted with a weird snowy light peopled with shifting forms eyes like burning embers great open jaws that multiplied and came nearer ever nearer but neither solange nor laurent was destined to die so horrible a death providence yes young men i believe in providence had decreed that i on that christmas morning should find myself on that particular road on my way home in my carryall from saint bonnet le désert i managed the lines my man held the gun and inspected the road no doubt our sleigh-bells frightened away the wolves for we saw none as we drove near the elm at the foot of which the lovers lay my mare shied and so drew our attention to them i jumped down from the seat my man and i settled them in the carryall as best we could covering them with what wraps we had along they were unconscious and almost frozen we took the bloody head of the wolf with us too it was about seven o'clock in the morning when we reached Ursay. the day was breaking over a landscape of spun glass and white velvet monsieur roger duflos farmers and at least one half of the inhabitants of the borough having heard of solange's disappearance came out to meet us and in the very kitchen where we dined this evening in front of a great fire of crackling heather laurent and his friend warmed themselves and told us the story of their terrible christmas one of us said and what followed doctor did they marry yes they were married answered our host the will of providence is sometimes so plainly indicated by events that the most obtuse cannot fail to perceive it after the adventure with the wolves solange's parents consented to her marriage with laurent Glier. the marriage took place in the spring the reward of fifty francs for the wolf's head paid for the wedding dress the doctor was silent night was full upon us the sky of a turquoise blue reflected its first stars in the river the mass of forest dense and inky shut off the horizon we saw solange the wolf girl dress her two boys and start homeward with them the youngest asleep on her shoulder she passed very near us and looking up smiled at the doctor the doctor said good night solange End of story twelve